We are here today speaking with a Morris Smith, head of the former NFLPA, the Football Players Union about their upcoming football season in the new CBA. Good morning, Mr. Smith. Good morning, Jenna. Good to be here. Mr. Smith. It's been no secret that the pensions and disability benefits have been too little too late especially for many of the older retirees. Your pensions are just a tiny fraction of what their counterparts in Major League Baseball have been receiving for years. Hey, in that last CBA from 2006, we negotiated a 50% increase for the older players. 50%. And we were doing the same for them this time. Why shouldn't they be grateful? Yes, but for most of the older retired players like Hall of Famer Lem Barney, that means he's going to get $300 instead of $200. See? I'm not lying. A 50% increase. That's why they pay us the big bucks. Okay then let's move on to some related issues. Wasn't your director of retired player services, Nolan Harrison III invited to attend the first meeting of the Eller lawsuit group back in Minneapolis? Yes. Nolan showed up. And he listened to what they had to say. Then he brought that information back to us so we knew everything they were trying to do not. Well, did you incorporate any of their ideas and needs into a proposal for retired players? Of course not. Nolan said he knows what's best for the retired players and it was a complete waste of time listening to them. Besides, they don't pay our paychecks and they don't have a vote anyway. Many sources have told us that you didn't want these retired player groups in the negotiations at all. What do you have to say to that? Well, We actually had our lawyer talk to them once. And what did he actually tell them? I'd rather not say. Besides, we weren't a union any longer so we didn't represent the retired players just like we couldn't represent the current players either. So there. But wait a minute. Didn't you just say that you already negotiated a shiny new package of benefits for the retired players already? Um, yes I did. Well then how could you claim to be able to negotiate on behalf of retired players if you didn't represent them legally during the lockout? Next question. Uh Aham. Awkward. Moving right along. So what about all those Hall of Famers signing on to the new retired football players' declaration of independence that just got posted over the weekend? Oh. That was totally bogus. Why poor Nolan Harrison III had to stay up all weekend trying to call each of those guys to talk them out of it. And he actually got to con, er, convince, a couple of them to remove their names from the list. We learned the trick from Roger. He had one of the alumni guys make a big fuss about being included in the lawsuit against the league and Riddell and it made some headlines. So we decided to try that too. People will believe just about anything we tell them. But I understand that for each Hall of Famer he managed to convince to remove his name, five more have stepped up to replace them. And now hundreds of retirees have also already signed the declaration in just a few days. Looks like you have a serious revolt on your hands. So? Who cares? They don't count and they don't vote. And Nolan's really been working hard to try and persuade them to switch sides all day long. In fact, We even had our website guy write and plant an article into the media to discredit them just this morning. Hey, if it's in the news, it must be true, right? These guys are not going to get anywhere. Gene Upshaw was right. This is nothing more than a small bunch of whiny old guys who don't appreciate every little thing we've taken, er, given, to them all these years. If they don't like what they get, too bad. Let them eat cake. Um. Okay, so there you have it. Soon to be again executive director of the NFLPA, Lee Morris Smith. Thank you for explaining everything to us today. Thank you for having me on to clear the air, Jenna.